So what's going on, Ghosts and Ghouls? It's Montavious back with the Empty Crypt, and today we are joined by a plethora of amazing cast members. So introducing, you know, the fan film of the year, Friday the 13th, Blood Loss. Now we are joined by amazing people here, but we're going to pop it off with Anthony, writer and director. So sir, if you don't mind, give us an introduction for, you know, people who may not know what this film is and who you are. I'm an independent uh, music and movie producer. Uh, we're currently working on Friday the 13th Blood Loss, which is in demand on Indiegogo. Oh my God. And do we have an amazing cast attached to this or what? We got, uh, I don't know if you knew this, we have Ari Lehman, the original Jason Voorhees uh, in this movie with us. We have Beatrice Buckley. She's Amanda Kruger from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Um, we have, of course, joined today by A.J. Stone, a.k.a. Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw, promotional material and additional scenes. He likes your face. And um, we have a whole bunch of cool people. We just announced Finn David. He was, uh, he was in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Um, Elena Schick, she was in Creed 2 in House of Cards. Yes. Um, we, I mean, of course, of course, we got all these amazing people. We got Amber Brooks. She was in Friday the 13th, <laughs> Vengeance 2, Bloodlines. Uh, Amanda Rybar, she was in Necroland. Uh, Sean Patterson was in Halloween Ends, The Supercut. Um, <laughs> Sarah Gillian from Desert Fiends and CJ Robles is in a whole, a whole plot, a bunch of movies I didn't even know. He's Pancake Man, and uh, he just got done working with another Leatherface actor, uh, Brett Wagner, and... I mean, we have like the best cast ever, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we're doing pretty good with the Indiegogo campaign. We have a bunch of amazing perks up there for people that want to donate. Um, we have autographs and Blu-rays, digital downloads, and all kinds of things. And uh, we're just blessed to have the, the kind of support that we have. And we're super excited to be here tonight. This is the first time that a lot of us have been live together. Um, it's the first time that we've had the pleasure of being live with uh, Sean Patterson and Amanda and CJ, so it's exciting for us. And also, CJ uh, talked about himself before the, the interview, but he didn't mention that I think his brother is going to be in the movie with us, too. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Nice. Well, welcome aboard, everyone. So just starting from the top, you know, just um, let's get to know you guys. So just introduce us to who you guys are and, and how you got involved. All right. Oh. Well, hi. <laughs> Who's going first? You're going to start. <laughs> so, Amanda, you can go first, and then we'll go Sean, and then so on and so forth. Okay, sure. I, all right. So, um, my name is Amanda, but my stage name is Dark Rain. I am a punk model, actress, singer, dancer, um, but mainly activist as well. Um, I got involved because, well, I'm right now currently in uh, the series Necroland, also filming for Vengeance of Dracula, um, and now involved in this. I adopted a camper at first. They're going to be named Rain, so I'll have to change my name for um, what I'm doing in it, but I'm going to be, well, actually, I don't know if I'm allowed to say what I'm going to be yet. We'll leave that up to Anthony, but I really encourage you, if you're watching this, by the way, to adopt a camper with me. I did it as a random act of kindness. It'd be great if you could play along and do the same. It's going to help to beat a camper that's going to be uh, acting in the movie. So I really hope that you can join in and do that. Nice, all right. All right, hello everybody. I'm glad to be with you. Uh, my name is LaShawn Patterson, but everybody calls me Sean. Uh, Anthony brought me on board to um, help you guys make an epic movie here this makes project number 44 for me maybe 45 i'm not sure but uh my acting career started back in high school and that's been a few years ago but um yeah i'm here to help you guys make an epic movie and let's have some fun nice and sir uh well i started out very young doing radio um then I did a little bit of theater and I went on to do a couple of television commercials. And then I sort of got into being a, an artist and um, then became a professional clown. And from there, um, I, I really enjoyed being a clown actually, but then I decided to start writing and became an author and wrote children's books. I was inspired because my son couldn't sleep at night 
So I wrote a book called uh, Did I Really Dream Last Night About Some Crazy Dreams? That, and it became a series. And after I published the series, um, I wrote another book and another book. So I sort of got into writing and um, illustrating. And then I decided uh, during the pandemic to get back into acting because it was really my first love. And I hadn't been a clown for a while and I wanted to perform again. So I just started making contacts and I became um, known as Toronto Tony in two uh, films that Steve Oakley did. He was involved in uh, MTV um, back in the day when the Kardashians, he did reality television so I could do it during the pandemic because it was filmed that way. And then uh, from there, um, I ended up in Desert Fiends and the Sean Phillips movie. And from there, um, you know, I've been back into clowning, still write, I wrote another book. And so I sort of go from, I'm, I'm kind of a, a chameleon type artist that just kind of goes with anything creative. And um, I contacted Anthony about getting into this film because I thought, you know, this horror stuff is really interesting and I'd like to get more involved in it. So here I am in this film. Not remarkable and Amber. Hi, I'm Amber Brooke, and I'm a model, actress, influencer, podcaster, weirdo. <laughs> I'm all of those things. Um, I have a show on Instagram called Terror Tuesday. I also have been in a few movies. I was in a Friday the 13th fan film before this one out in Seattle called Vengeance 2 Bloodlines. Then I just got done filming 259 out in Idaho, like literally like two or three weeks ago. And then I'm on this one and um, I'm gonna be the badass chick in this movie. I'm so excited. Anthony asked me to be the lead and I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm really excited. I like to swear too. That's that's another thing. <laughs> and CJ, what's up? Yeah, man, just just give us a, a small introduction on who you are and how you got involved in the film. All right, um, I'm CJ Rob. So I'm getting somebody like uh, some kickback over here. Like somebody's uh, mic is. Anyways, um, I'm here. am I am I hearing it too? Or am I... anyways, so I. Um, I started uh, acting as a kid and I uh, didn't think anything of it. I just did theater and stage and then I uh, graduated high school. Um, didn't I went to university and kind of just hung around Austin, Texas for a long time. And then uh, I turned 30, I got my degree in animation. And then from there, I just started acting again. And um, I started my podcasting. I started My Manic Mondays, the movies and mental health um, uh, interactive vlog. And then from there, I just started meeting more people through the online community and the, the horror community. I, I started going to the, the conventions like Texas Frightmare. Um, I started doing like um, Con and then uh, like Wizard World and what I just started meeting people. And um, I, I started um, uh, sponsor, like uh, doing the associate producers for some Indiegogo campaigns. And some people just reached out to me and were like, hey, you should look at this movie, look at this and buy this part and do that. And I was like, sure. So I started with uh, Desert Fiends. I, uh, that one was filmed in Las Vegas and it was filmed the day after my birthday. So I said I had to do it. So I came out uh, Desert Fiends. They did a Pancake Man in um, uh, May, like around May 30th, went out there to LA. Then I signed up for um, Critters, uh, All You Can Eat. It, uh, it'll be in, um, we'll be filming in September. That's a Robbie Lopez film. And then um, I reached out to Anthony on this one. And he was like, uh, yeah, if you're interested here, got some perks, got this. And I just, I signed up and I was like, I want to be part of this. I love, I didn't, I didn't realize we can go back and uh, do the fan films. And I, I grew up watching Jason. I grew up watching Freddy. I grew up watching everybody, even Critters, you know, I, I love them so much. And now as a part of me, I can be, I can do this. And I, I want to be part of it. I want to do this. So just kind of, just kind of just view new social media and just started being like, I want to be part of this. And he let me be part of this. So it's cool. Uh Awesome, awesome. And Mr. Leatherface himself, welcome aboard. How's it going, man? Uh-oh. We can't hear you. Are you talking to me? My bad, my bad. <laughs> Everybody keeps popping up on the screen. It's pretty cold looking. But anyway, started at the age of five. 
in music, 50 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> Anthony, when I see people, and it doesn't matter who they are, but when I see passion in a project for whatever art it is, I'm, I'm on board. That's just the bottom line. If it has that passion, like real passion for what they are doing, whoever is doing it, I'm there and I support 100%. That's why I'm here. Nice, remarkable. And Mr. Simeon. Do you mean Simon? Simon, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Hello, I'm Simon Moody, and I'm playing Henry. And uh, Anthony was kind enough to invite me into the project. Um, like uh, one of my fellow actors, I've been a, a clown all my life, but I just didn't get paid for it. <laughs> no, I was a criminal defense attorney for 34 years. And, uh, but being, I've been involved in theatre for well over 40 years and uh, which has involved stages both Australia, London, and here. Uh, obviously, a, a lot of Shakespeare in there, but uh, a lot of other plays too. And um, more recently, over the last few years, a lot of indie films, and for some reason or another, they think my accent may be useful. <laughs> uh, so therefore, uh, I'm happy to be aboard and uh, I look forward to working with everyone. So thank you all. Awesome. Thank you. And Anthony, um, Mandy, I would assume, are, is she a part of the film as well? He's asking you. Okay, I was having a hard time hearing. Yes, um, I'm working on the, this project with Anthony. I'm behind the scenes doing more of the production work and everything. Um, I'm an actress, producer. Um, I have my own production thing going on as well because I have a couple of films that I, I have one script that I've written and then I have another one that's in the works. Um, I don't want to go too much into that because we're trying to promote this movie. <laughs> but um, I'm an artist and I just, I dabble in a little bit of everything. I was on the Dr. Bull show, which um, I would film from my home in Florida. I had a studio set up and then I would send the footage out to California and that's a what that's a web show. And um, I was production coordinator assistant for the Sawyer Massacre. And yes, that's a big one. <laughs> but then um, I, was, I did podcasting for Behind the Fiends and then the Toxic Horror Show with Anthony on the Rabbit and Red Radio Network. Nice. So okay. Well, definitely. everyone, welcome. Welcome for sure. So just jump right into the questions, guys. So, Anthony, where did this idea come from to a fan film? And What's going to stand out about blood loss versus other Friday the 13th? Well, uh, the idea came from uh, Simon. Simon here uh, in, the, in the bottom was actually in a, a different fan film called Halloween Inferno. And it was made by some guys here that are, are local. And they're, they're known for doing, like, amazing work on their films and everything. So I just... You know, I was trying to keep up with them and I thought like what can I do they've already done Halloween they already did Leatherface and I like Jason a lot so I thought hey maybe I'll give Jason a shot and we actually conceived the idea of uh, making a short film it was only meant to be about 15 to 30 minutes long and it became more support and a bigger cast and more funding uh, we, just, we decided to, to rework everything and turn into a full-length feature film um, so what's going to set this apart is all the uh, amazing talent that we have, uh, the, the love and the, the ambition behind it all. Um, we're definitely all excited to work together. We have a fun story lined up for it. Um, Amber kind of spoiled it a little bit. She might be pretty cool in this movie. <laughs> She's going to be awesome in this movie. Um, we have just, uh, you know, top-notch casting. Um, uh, a good script and um, a lot of support behind it. Um, you know, I, I love the other fan films that are coming out too. I don't want to take anything away from them. I love the Never Hype, Never Hype Alone series and My Special Boy did well and The Vengeance and Vengeance 2. Um, and there's just a bunch of them that are, you know, really cool. Roseblood's another one. Um, I, like, I like them all, you know, but um, just... You know, we we thought we would just put our own uh, twist and our own spin on things. We have um, 
Ari Lehman again, the original Jason Voorhees in this one. Uh, we thought we'd kind of pay homage to the original Friday the 13th film with that without giving too much away. Uh, Sherry Fairchild's going to appear in the movie as uh, Pamela Voorhees. She was pre uh, previously in Terrifier 2, so we're pretty excited to have her attached to it as well. And um, I... I hope I answered the question. I hope I answered the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. And so, and like, and what does it mean to you, Anthony, as a as a you know writer director, to have so many people you know want to be a part of something that that you're creating? It's exciting. You know, there are a lot of projects out there, and these guys are so talented, and they're you know so easy easy to work with that they could probably get involved with any other film so just the fact that they're willing to be a part of this with us is you know a blessing and we appreciate them and you know i'm very grateful uh to have their their uh support. their support and their, <laughs> their friendship i like to i think it's friendship i like i think we're all friends i think my friends uh but yeah no it's just uh it's awesome because there are a lot of, of films that have a hard time getting off the ground they can't find uh, casting or funding or whatever the case me you know we're in a decent position now where we can actually do something with the film um and and it's it, you know it has legs to it finally so it's Extremely it's a good cool. feeling nice it's awesome so now when does filming start for everybody so has has everybody met in person yet have you guys met in person or do you guys have any no no Not yet. me and anthony mm -hmm. are people <laughs> <laughs> no, no uh, we haven't met in person yet we're um still holograms we're still locking in the uh, <laughs> filming date, uh but hey, we have to soon, and then we hope to start filming at the end of next month okay. awesome so i mean with everybody not meeting each other yet so you know there's different personalities and all that stuff so how important is it for the for your cast to actually have that relationship where they can you know portray their roles on film I think it's important, you know, I think we were pretty strategic when we picked the cast, um, you know, we, we went with people that we thought were going to be easy to work with and people that we thought would be able to contribute to the film, you know, like Sean said before, you know, I was excited to have him attached to it because he's a strong actor, he, he can help kind of push the scenes further and get them to where they need to be. <laughs> yeah, he carries um, scenes really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we just, you know, we went with people that we thought added something to the cast. They're either easy to work with or they have natural talent or they have experience or some, there was something about them that we liked. So uh, we, you know, we hope that we, you know, we'll have a pretty easy time because just the people that we, we picked to be a part of this are great people, you know, like Simon's been in, I don't know, a million different things now, I think. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was actually a fan of Simon's before this, so I'm glad uh, I was able to cast him. He was like the perfect choice for Henry. And, um, you know, I know that he's worked with other filmmakers that I know. And so I know that they had uh, success with Simon. And, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to, to hope, you know, work with him and, um, you know, just have a great time shooting his scenes and, yeah, I don't know. I can't, you know, I would probably sit here for like an hour and just talk about the cast and like how amazing I think they all are and <laughs> all that stuff. But um, I think it's going to be uh, pretty easy for us because I already have an idea of who they are and we've spent time talking over social media. And um, it feels like even though we haven't met in person, it feels like we've spent time together. Um, you know, Amber's done a, a handful of live feeds with us and Sarah's done a couple now and AJ's done uh, a couple with us as well. And, you know, I've spent time talking to some of them on the phone and through emails and through Facebook and all kinds of things. So it, fe it kind of feels like a, like the blood loss family at this point, you know, we have a group chat, everybody's active in there now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's sharing uh, hair tips and things. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, with that as well, so I kind of want to everybody start at Amanda. Um, you know, what's one thing that really attracted you to, you know, your role in the, the script? I don't have you guys all seen the script or you haven't released scripts yet? No. No. no? Okay. So <laughs> what, what attracted you to the film to, you know, be a part of, you know, blood loss? Horror fan. 
horror fans. Yeah. And I've done horror Same. modeling. I, you know, so it's like, I'm all about horror. So of course I want to be a part of something like this, you know, <laughs> who wouldn't? For, for sure. And Sean, you? Well, uh, it's, it's inspiration. Um, um, when Tony, when Tony reached out to me, um, and he told me about the project, I thought it was great. And I am, a, I'm also a, a big fan of horror films. So, uh, mm -hmm. it was easy for me to get, get on board and, you know, we're going to make it do what it do. Cool. I love that. And, uh, Ms. um, Sierra. <laughs> I just, you know, anything creative and I'm right in there too. I'm just like, okay, let's do this. This will be fun. And I'm really interested in, in, in the horror element too. I think that's really cool. It's going to be really fun. I'm interested in anything that's fun and, and the horror element is big <laughs> with me too. <laughs> nice. And Miss Amber, what attracted you to be a part of this film? Well, I think mostly it was passion. It seemed like Mandy and Anthony had a real passion for this film, and it, it was very attractive to, to me. And I also am a big fan of Jason, a huge horror fan. And the role itself sounded friggin' awesome. I was like, heck yeah, I want to be a part of this amazing movie. Okay, and see. Uh, anything, anything, oh, sorry, Simon. Okay, Simon and CJ. <laughs> Uh, age. <laughs> See, age before beauty. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, no, I was talking to you, CJ. I'm oh, trying okay. to go my screen. So. <laughs> All right, my bad. Oh, no, yeah. Um, I think the fact that uh, just anything movie, anything that helps me kind of like uh, unwind and just kind of get lost in, and then just the fact that it's a Jason movie, like fan film. Um, since I've been going to the horror conventions, I've been meeting so many people and, you know, you bring up a fan film and they know it, they love it. And I'm like, oh, this is where I need to be. This is the people I want to be. What else y'all? And then just looking at the Indiegogo and seeing that, that there's opportunities for me, like, I'm, like auditioning is one thing, but like getting a part and being part, just being stuck with great people already, like being put in, I love this. I love the, the group chat. I love getting to see everybody. And the cool thing about this, um, my brother is 18 years younger than me. And he is also, he's going to be in the movie. Come say hi. I got him in here right here. This is my brother, Bobby. He's, this, is the, this is the team. Hey, what's up? Hey, I'll be hey. I'll be so, so the fact that I could I can bring my brother into this and uh, show him more of um, the uh, you know the acting, the the film. If he's interested, if not, I mean, he's still something he gets to be a part of. And the the fun fact is when I brought him to Desert Fiends, um, we got on set. They instantly just threw him in there as an extra, like as an extra featured extra, just like right there. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like. <laughs> I did. I had the audition. I'm mean, not for this one, but other things like this guy gets right on set and they're like, "Hey, get over here!" And I was like, "Oh, well, hey, you know what? Let's keep doing this. Let's keep see, see what we can do." But uh, yeah, the fact that Anthony's given us a, an opportunity to do this, I'm I'm grateful and thank you. And this is has awesome. he been awesome. there the whole time? No, no. I just I just I just text him right now and I was like, because hey, uh, Anthony brought him up. And I was like, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> Anthony brought you up." Yeah, uh, yeah. I know and Bobby, Bobby's excited to work <laughs> on this AJ. Right? Nice. And AJ, what about you? I mean, I mean, you're, I mean, Leatherface is legendary, man. So like, you know, what really attracted you to, you know, this film? I needed more people to kill. <laughs> <laughs> I love that answer, AJ. That was beautiful. <laughs> he ran out of faces. We need another one. Update. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I needed more people to kill. Him. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's the truth. Nice. Love it. I love it. This leather face fashion needed more people. To put <laughs> and Simon, you know, what attracted you, you know, to want to be a part of something like Blood Loss? Well, I love the horror genre. I, I just want to talk to Leatherface and let him know the last film I was in was with Danny Trejo. <laughs> um, I know Danny. He killed, yeah. a, he killed a few in his time too. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was binge two. Okay. And, uh, that, uh, that's <laughs> but um, no, Anthony, I, I responded on backstage actually, and Anthony reached out to me personally immediately and offered me the role of Henry. And I, I said, well, let me think about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, lo I love the genre. Uh, and as Anthony had mentioned, I've done a number of different uh, indie horror movies and. Uh, uh, including The Offering, which is on YouTube. And uh, I think you mentioned uh, Halloween Inferno 4. Um, 
but also <laughs> Viking movies out there too. Who would have thunk it that I'd be doing a Viking movie? Oh, that, <laughs> that sounds <laughs> fine. <laughs> that, that, I, uh, I'm so, loving it. I can't wait to see the script. Yeah, see, now that is what I'm really intrigued in. It's like, you know, Anthony working with everybody's different personalities and, you know, having that character be who you guys are, you know, essentially. So, I mean, since you guys haven't got the script yet or, or anything like that, um, have you kind of prepared yourself, you know, to be in another, you know, horror film? And especially with the strike that's going on now, how important is this film uh, to, you know, just worldwide? I mean, indie is really a big thing right now. And, you know, you guys are going to contribute to that. So, like, how important is this film? Well, if I may, I'll tell you, I think it's, it's very important. It reminds me, actually, of the time during the pandemic, uh, particularly with stage, when you, all, this, all the theatres were closed, you, you couldn't do anything, and, and people have to think outside the box, and which is mm -hmm. why we came up with, uh, you know, video plays where you're doing it... Uh, you know, simply by way of uh, uh, and the internet. And it worked. It kept people in the theatre groove. And I think that was very important to keep theatre alive. I think theatre is life. It has been throughout centuries and uh, back to even before Socrates. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's vital, uh, particularly with indie projects, that, that uh, people reach and you know you you may not always win, but you know you, it, it, it's always worth the effort. And uh, I'm happy to be a part of of Anthony's effort here, and I look forward to working with everyone. Nice, awesome. And so, Anthony, you know, back to you. Um, so, how important is this film, man? Like, I know, like I said, I think indie. There's going to be a big push, you know, for indie right now, especially. And you know, you're kind of at the forefront of, you know you got this amazing cast, man. So like odds are going to be set on you, essentially on you guys. So like, you know, how important is this film to like, you know, the world? Well, I think it's incredibly important because there's so much attention on the, the strike right now. It, it does give us an opportunity to stand out and to show what we can do um, and, and to show what independent filmmakers can do. Um, I think we represent those people that are, are non-union or the people that are just breaking out. And um, like you said, I think all eyes are on us and we're gonna, we're gonna do them well, right? We're gonna do right by Can everybody. And it? Can I give you an all-star? All-star movie. movie. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're really excited for the opportunity to, uh, to be able to do this with, with the extra uh, attention put on the film. Okay, awesome. And, that, and that, that's really good to hear that you still have people wanting to, you know, go out there and push boundaries and, you know, stand up, but still be able to deliver, you know, a quality film. And so, I mean, how do you compare, you know, Blood Loss to those other fan films? I know you respect them, but at the same point in time, you know, you, you want to do better than, than what they did. So, like, how do you compare? Oh, sorry, my little rat's gone off up there. So how do you compare <laughs> Loss to you know other films it's gonna be bloodier it's gonna <laughs> be more fun it's gonna be nobody's gonna survive nobody's gonna survive <laughs> uh there's gonna be a lot of deaths in the movie i can tell you that there's a lot of deaths in the movie there's a lot of blood in the movie it's called blood loss for a good reason there will be blood. I can see a reaching for something scary I, up there. I already say it. Um, it's going to be a celebration of all things Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's. But it, it really is. You know, we we talked about that. We've spent a considerable amount of time talking, Ari, about the importance of the uh, the feminine factor in Friday the Thirteenth that's overlooked in some of the, uh, the later films in the franchise. We wanted to give that back to Friday the Thirteenth. That's why we have Amber Brooke like playing such a strong character in the film. Uh, we brought Ari back because who knows Jason Voorhees better than Jason Voorhees, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know why more people haven't tried to get Ari involved with their projects. He's incredibly easy to work with. He's a lot of fun. Very um, energetic. He's just so open to it. He gets so excited about it. And yeah, yeah. It's like he's just very passionate about yeah. it. So it's, it's excellent. And you got the old guy. 
<laughs> it's yeah uh, well of course simon you know like i said i was a fan of simon even before this this stuff came about um yeah when he reached out to me i i immediately i was like hey like you like this is for you and he's like yep and, and it was good to go you know i was i was so happy that night um uh but yeah i'm just uh, excited to work with all these people did amber do, oh no they switched around on me yeah um, um we got yeah. really lucky when um, AJ reached out to me for, um, he was interested in the role for Jason and everything. And that was through a mutual contact that we have, um, Tom Glenn, who was from Creepshow. And that, that was just, it was an excellent opportunity. And I got so excited over that. It's like I told Anthony, I was like, oh, we're casting them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think uh, just, just so you know, there will be a lot of deaths in this film. I think more than there have been in any other uh, Friday the 13th fan film or original um, official film. Um, I think it's going to have more kills than I'm trying to think if if there's a slasher off the top of your head. Do, you, do any of you guys know like how many how many kills are in some of the other films? Like I know Halloween Kills had like 20, 20 something. No, I think the newest one had over 30. Over 30? Yeah. 36. 36. <laughs> It's probably 36. That's what I thought. It was close to 40. It's probably going to rival that. And it's really <laughs> difficult to do because, you know, we are on a budget. We're trying to sell um, that perp too. Be a victim. Be a victim. <laughs> yeah, be a victim. In the um, some of those deaths, uh, some of the deaths will be off screen, but we will have a considerable amount in the, in the film. No, that's not what the perp okay. is. All right. <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, a lot of depth in the film. Uh, story uh, has a lot to do with family and actually uh, losing family members and grieving, um, which I think was overlooked in some of the other films that talk about, you know, Jason died and drowned in, in the lake and, you know, his mom's out killing people, but they never talk about, they never go in depth about uh, her grieving process or uh, what it would be like for somebody else to lose a family member. You know, I lost my dad. I think five years ago and I had to grieve and you go through different stages of grieving and we uh, we explore that in the film in a way that I don't think has been done before. Mm. Nice. Well, I'm um, sorry to hear about your father as well, man. No, that's um, you made it sad. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mean to make it sad. It's, it's no. all good. <laughs> Just, it happens, man. No, so, okay. For you to get back into a killer role, I mean, is there excitement in there or you're just, you know, you're just ready just to rip people heads off? So where's your mind? Is that directed to me? Yes. <laughs> okay, I didn't hear you say AJ. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how to really say it. Throughout my career, whatever... I've had the benefit of whatever I'm feeling that I want to do. I had the ability to go and do it. If I'm in music mode, love mode, killing mode, uh, <laughs> directing mode, whatever mode, I, I've had the luxury of being able to to kind of write a ticket. I've been okay. Um, with this, that's the mode I'm in. Um, I actually stepped away from everything. Uh, for a while throughout the mid 2000 from like after Leatherface actually I did a few things after that but then my agent who actually got me back into it I I warned because I'm I'm always in business I always do business and I warned him I said look I said if you wake the beast back up I'm gonna have to you know the creativity is gonna come back out and I'm gonna have to do something so when Tom Glenn, a great guy, um, had mentioned it to me. I immediately reached out to them because I was feeling it. After I had a conversation with them, I knew. I knew this was going to be a good, good project. And it's something that I really wanted to, what should I say, sink my machete into. <laughs> there we go. So, I mean... With, with with everyone here we can go back up to the top and so you guys can all answer uh so what's been some of the most uh difficult times that you guys had on set and this could be anything i kind of want to get to know like you guys' backstory with just working on different um different things so like what what's a difficult time you guys had on set 
And we can start with Amanda. Um, I would just say weather related. I mean, during uh, Necroland, there was in, in one of the last times that we were filming, a tornado warning happened. And so there was some pretty funky weather going on while we were filming outside. But other than that, you know, it's if you're a determined person, you work hard and you love what you do. There isn't really going to be a difficult time. You know, you just keep on pushing forward with your determination and make it happen. All right. And you, Sean? Uh, the most difficult time that I ever had, uh, I have to say, is um, I was working on a project. I'm not going to call their names, but I was working on a project and uh, they didn't have the uh, necessary uh, 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 permits and the real cops showed up. And oh. uh, that, oh, yeah. that, 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 that turned out, uh, uh, it could have been a lot uglier, but it was, it was uh, they, they put the brakes on a lot of things and we had to, you know, stop shooting and whatever but uh we eventually got things back on track but that really threw a monkey wrench in the program but we finally got it done though okay and you sir uh, i would have to think back to uh last november i was in um a little series in new york city in chinatown and um i made the mistake of arriving on the set really early myself I mean I think the mistake was was I mean it was kind of the, a weather thing um as mentioned the weather was really freezing cold and I was an hour ahead of schedule <laughs> so I was really cold and that's about you know I mean that's that's a killer when you're standing there waiting for and then Eventually, the director and a few and his assistant showed up and they had a parka that they gave me to put on because I was underdressed. And yeah, I think that would probably be, you know, it sucks when the weather is sucky, you know, for sure. <laughs> EJ and Bobby, like, so, you know, what's, what's a difficult time on set? And, and I have a purpose for the question because it's going to come back to Anthony and I'm like, man, what are you going to do? What are you and Mandy going to do to make sure things run smoothly other than weather? <laughs> not in your control. <laughs> That's the one uh, thing you never can really do. Man, again. I don't, you said, uh, what problems? Uh, well, let me see, how much time do you have? Uh, being, a, <laughs> being a filmmaker since I was a high school for a kid, since I was a kid, um, I've had everything like Murphy's Law. Every time I want to make a movie, it, it's gonna something's gonna happen. Something's gonna <laughs> fall apart. Somebody's not gonna show up. The the equipment's not gonna show up. So we're not gonna have permission. We got permission. They took it away. Everything you can think of, I've pretty much <laughs> gone through. At the end of the day, it's you have to have a project, whatever it is. If it's if it's not the grade A you thought you were gonna get, it's okay. Because even when we did the Desert Fiend, we were in, um, we did that in, in late March and we were in um, in Vegas and we're in the mountains and it, it, the weather was just dropping on us and we're doing this, our scene, our death scene was at the end of the day and I was just, and he was like, I was like, yeah, dude, this is it, this is what happens. Like we, we was warm when we got here and now it's 41 degrees and dropping and we're, I'm about to get splashed with, with blood, but you know what? It was a good shot. So I don't care. It was a good take. But uh, anything I could uh, I could show him with just uh, just uh, show my brother all my experience is uh, it's things aren't gonna work out the way you want them when it comes to movie just get it done the best thing you can do is have a good set have a good crew and like what like so these people are already I'm already like falling in love with my with the crew here or the cast because it seems like no matter what we'll be able to get through the day and be able to get uh, our shots and get where we need to get and Anthony's gonna be a great leader for us so it's cool and. Uh, and uh, you know, um, you know, my brother here is gonna get to act with Mr. AJ Stone, so I'm a little jealous here about that. But <laughs> see how that goes. <laughs> and and Mr. AJ, what's what's the difficult time you had on set? I mean, it could be weather related or whatever, but like difficult time in general. Well, I would tell you're asking me. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that out of everything that I've always done, I've always had a great experience, except for one time which literally was for Texas Chainsaw. See, I came into that movie after it had already died, and then Lionsgate got the movie. When Lionsgate purchased the movie and started doing what they did, that's where I came in. Mm -hmm. During the time of what I was doing for this project, I literally was riding my bicycle on Hollywood Boulevard, and I got hit by a car. Oh, no. When I fell, if you look at this poster right here, when I fell, I broke my hand. 
if you can look at me holding, I don't know how well you can see that right there or not. Let me raise it up a little bit. But if you look at the poster here, I broke my freaking hand. And I had to film for two weeks holding that freaking chainsaw. Oh, man. For 14 hours a day, man. I'm talking. Yeah. And, and the directors and the directors of photography and everything that we were doing, because we were shooting 3D stuff. Uh, we were doing trailers we were doing we were doing everything okay additional scenes that we were adding on reshooting scenes that were already done it was a lot and i'm gonna tell you every morning that thing weighed five pounds and at the end of the day th that son of a bitch was like a hundred thousand freaking pounds and they didn't <laughs> care that i had a broken hand they didn't care they i mean and it hurt that was my hardest time ever in a film because of that it and simon was what's the rough time you had on set man Ooh, your your mic is off okay can you hear me now yes sir we're good all right no following on from that some of the toughest times have been those 20 hour shoots like you're literally on set for 20 hours the vast majority of which you're sitting around twiddling your thumbs but um during binge two, uh, the day before uh, the first shoot, uh, I broke, uh, suffered a compressed fracture of my left ankle and broke the lower fibula, but still came on set the next day. It was uh, and had to stand around on that. They were far more sympathetic, I might say, than than for my friend there, but uh, that was pretty tough. But one of the most more interesting ones is after shooting, after doing, it wasn't a shoot, it was a play for Macbeth. And it was set in the twenties and I provided all the weapons. And uh, so I'm coming home from the stage and my, I'm wearing this blood covered shirt and I, my car is full of uh, uh, museum quality replica weapons. And I'm on the New York state Thruway, and I get pulled over by a trooper. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Now, I, I thought ahead, and I had a poster and a program on the front passenger seat, <laughs> so, so he could say, "No, really, mate, I haven't come from some homicidal axe wielding maniac movie. <laughs> <laughs> coming home after a play of Macbeth, and I can say that because I'm not on stage at the moment." And um, and he just laughed and let me go. <laughs> <laughs> But and really, and it, it, the, those long, 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 long days of tedium where you're just sitting around twiddling your thumbs. Um, that, that's because I've got St. Fighters dance. I get ants in my pants. I just want to get on and get in, get her done. <laughs> and Amber, just a difficult time you had on set. Honestly, I don't think I've actually had a really oh. difficult time. I mean, when I was filming Vengeance, I had to, we started filming the scene a little bit late because we were trying to get it so it was like darker outside. And I actually had to catch a flight that same night home. So we had literally just finished our scene in the cabin and I had to leave. I had to go. I had to get on the plane. So now we do it differently where I book way out. <laughs> So yeah, but honestly, like being on set is the most fun you're ever going to have. And it's it's not it's more enjoyable than difficult. Yes, there's long days, but it's so worth it. And it's a blast hanging out with the family, with the film family. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's not really difficult. So hey guys, I've got I have to leave. Um it's been a pleasure, but I, I have to I have to run. Uh, oh, yeah. I appreciate the time. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. Really looking forward to this project. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. All the best, everybody. Peace out. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So, um, and, and I'll be brief. So Anthony and Mandy, so we're hearing that some of the concerns that, you know, your cast members had on other, you know, sets, what are you guys going to do to make sure, you know, obviously you can't control weather. However, how are you guys going to make sure that things are running smoothly? Well, the, the one that concerned me the most was the uh, the permits. And uh, just for the record, just for the record, I have had conversations with the film commission and where 
we're all set on permits. So no, no, no <laughs> issues there. Um, I, I can't control the weather. That's true, but we can uh, try to work around it. So if there's a day where it's rainy, maybe we can do some scenes indoors and uh, get that covered so that we're not taking up too much time from, from the actors. Um, but I mean, that's what, what were some of the, I can't, uh, can't promise that, um, you know, if, Faye J shows up with a broken hand. I'll be mindful of that. I won't have him. I won't have him carry <laughs> him around. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Oh no! All right, we here. We back. We're there back. we go. All right. So yeah, AJ shows up with a broken hand. I won't ask him to carry anything heavy. Um, mm -hmm. Amber sounds like she's gonna have a fun time no matter what. <laughs> and then uh, I think the other ones were mostly weather, right? Weather related for, for me. Yeah, yeah. I know about this. Filming and stuff, it's always um, unpredictable and everything, but there's always plans in place for things like that. And mm -hmm. especially, um, we'll have to have it to where you have like an extra day here and there, like in between filming. So that way, if something does happen, you can switch those days around as well. So that way, there's always something in place to prevent like everybody like getting like worried, like, oh my God, is this going to stop it for today? I don't know. Yeah, I think a lot of all right. I think we'll, a lot of kids always get excited though. Like, yay, we get to play today. We'll but. figure it out. <laughs> you know, uh, I was I was on set one time and some of the actors, uh, it was somebody else's movie a long time ago. Some of the other actors didn't show up. And so uh, to get these guys to show up, I'm going to bribe you all with pizza. Come on, guys, we're going to have pizza. <laughs> all right, um, I'm in. You had me at pizza. Just as <laughs> yeah, long as it's, it's plenty of gluten. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I think we're, you know, we're all pretty easygoing and flexible with that, that kind of stuff. Like I said, we're all set with permits. Um, so, so no issues there. We're not filming in public. We're not uh, blocking traffic or anything like that. Um, I've covered uh, the weapons stuff with them to make sure that we're uh, complying with, their demands <laughs> and uh we're, we're all set with permits um and that's that's pretty much it we're good to go awesome so cool. if y'all don't know anthony is all set with permits yes <laughs> <All right. laughs> but, you know just just a question for the sake of time uh so go ahead and plug you know where people can go check out the the indiegogo friday the 13th blood loss on indiegogo um the, the we'll put the, the link in the comment section of the video that way people can just click on it but if you just search for Friday the 13th blood loss you'll be able to find it it's in demand I don't know if I mentioned that before it's in demand and we have a lot of cool perks and uh, an amazing cast you know we've shown that here today plus we have a whole bunch of other ones that weren't able to join us tonight but maybe we'll come on again and we'll bring some of them on we'll drag them on We'll we'll lie and bribe them, and we'll get them on some help. We'll tell them that we're offering pizza for the, for the interview. Yeah, uh, we'll get them on here. Um, but yeah, guys, check it out. Donate if you can't donate. Um, share yeah. the link. Share the link because every time you share the link, it it causes um. It goes a long way. Yeah, it goes <laughs> it goes a long way. It creates an opportunity for someone else that might be, be able, able to, to donate uh, to to do so. So um yeah it, sharing goes a long way um and sharing is caring sharing is caring <laughs> <laughs> oh and, and just in closing guys um so for we're uh, going to be watching um so just want to go through everybody again so just one thing that you guys are looking forward to the most with you know blood loss and your social media handles so fans out there can you know get connected with you guys and we will start at the top with amanda well, what I'm looking forward to the most is working with these awesome people. It's a great cast with great personalities. I love watching them, whether they're just being interviewed or whether they're, you know, advertising for the movie. It's a great cast of people. And uh, you can find me on Facebook under Amanda Simmons Rybars. It'll say Dark Rain in parentheses. That's my stage name. You could also find me on Instagram under Dark, D-A-R-Q-U-E, period, Rain, R-A-Y-N-E. I know it's a unique spelling. And it is also the same on TikTok. So awesome. And you, Sean, where can, where can the fans get connected with you? And then uh, one thing that you're looking forward to most with the film. Uh, the, the thing that I'm really looking forward to the most is, is the, is, is the actual project itself uh, with the, with the cast and the crew. Uh, I look forward to the, the, the finished project. 
I look forward to knowing everyone that I'm working with. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to giving Hollywood something to worry about yes. with this project. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can find me on Facebook at Sean LSP Patterson. Um, and you can also find me on uh, Instagram at LaShawn.Patterson.5. You can, you can contact me anytime. It doesn't matter. Awesome. Awesome. And we're wrapping up with Ms. Sear. Uh, well, I'm on Facebook at Sarah um, Jillian. And oh, what am I looking forward to in this production? I think that the whole thing is going to be so much fun. I think meeting the people, uh, going to the locations. I think the whole, the whole creative uh, thing is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to every aspect of it. Um, I'm also on Instagram at that Sarah one two three four, and Twitter at Sarah Jillian seventy one, and LinkedIn at Sarah Jillian and TikTok at Sarah Jillian 71. And I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> I kind of, I'm all out there and I just, I just like sabotage the whole internet with my videos and, and <laughs> selfies. And I'm out there. So you can find me. You can also Google me up and you'll see Sarah Jillian and it'll be like, a million things there and you can find all my stuff there as well so nice. <laughs> for sure for sure and uh cj and bobby uh one thing that you guys are looking forward to you know with the production and you know where can we find you guys um i think the the one thing i'm looking forward to is uh, i've never been to new york so i'm looking forward to being out there and filming over there that'd be cool uh, it's a featured film it's another thing i'm really uh, excited about uh, we're going to be with jason you know like like a whole film uh i don't know i'm just i'm i'm ready uh, i think um other, other than like just uh, showing the ability of like working with a team and and making a good movie i'm just excited to be part of a, a freaking friday the 13th movie and i was telling i was telling my brother that you know the age difference i was like you know if you haven't seen the other ones that's pretty cool because you get the uh, you get the, one, you get the first one is coming out of the friday the 13th project you know, that was pretty cool. pretty cool. And uh, yeah, you can find uh, me at uh, CJ Robles 2.0. That's my handle. And I'm also at a uh, My Manic Mondays, um, where movies and mental health meet. That's on uh, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, uh, and uh, Instagram and all that. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just I'm just happy. I'm excited. I'm 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 really looking forward to this project. I'm looking forward to the blood. I'm looking forward to the loss. I'm looking forward to all of it. So. <laughs> Nice. And AJ, uh, Leatherface himself, man, what, what what is it that you're looking forward to most with, you know, the film? A new mask, man. <laughs> A new mask, baby. That's it. Actually, um, you know, if you're into horror, but that's true, a new mask. Um, if you're into horror... This is one of the big four, okay? Um, a friend of mine, CJ Graham, who is Jason in part six, um, I can't wait to actually talk to him when I see him in a couple of weeks to actually ask him, you oh, know. Features, join us. <laughs> about oh. this. Um, Hi, B. Just to get a little bit of input from him. But what I'm looking forward to, to the most other than the mask is just being a scary motherfucker <laughs> straight up I'm telling you right now I like your face Bobby <laughs> I love it <laughs> uh, you know keep up to date with Leatherface or sorry we'll, we'll skip past that with Jason ask that again uh, where can fans, you know, go to, you know? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I I lost my vapidness for a minute. Um, <laughs> of course, you can, everything is AJ Stone. If you don't know how to spell stone, my friends call me Stoan. They make fun of it. It's S-T-O-A-N. Just AJ Stone. That's simple. Just go on to Google. You'll see me wherever I am in Instagram and wherever else. That's... You know, I really, I really don't play the, 
really do the social media game that much. Instagram is probably my biggest outlet that I share. Facebook has went down for me. I don't really, I'm not really into that much. Um, but just Instagram, you know, I'm, I'm a simple guy. I just need one. Mm. But, but I have had all the others and I'm sure they still exist. I used to tweet until I wake up every morning and I'd be fighting with everybody until finally now I watch funny cat videos and funny dog videos. So that way I get out of bed happy. Um, so yeah, I used to tweet. I used to, that's now just IG, AJ Stone. Facebook does exist, you know, um, Again, AJ Stone, just search Leatherface, whatever. I'm there. I'll see you. I promise I'll see you. <laughs> Amber, uh, you know, one thing you're looking forward to with the project and also where can fans go to connect with you? Well, I'm really looking forward to actually meeting you guys. Talk to you all on Messenger, but I haven't met you yet. I'm very excited to work with you guys. I'm also excited for all the kills. I love that shit. So <laughs> that's exciting to me. Also, um, you can find me on Instagram, amber.brook32. It's the same on TikTok, um, Facebook, it's Amber Brook. Yeah, but I'm, I'm mostly on Instagram too, just like AJ, because Instagram is way better than Facebook, that's for sure. But yeah, excited about this project, ready to kill some people or get killed. I don't know what happens. <laughs> don't kill us, please. We love you. And one and only Miss Beatrice, you caught us at the telltale end, but I'm glad you're here. So um, I was just asking uh, the cast, like, what are you guys looking for the most with, you know, blood loss? And of course, everybody already knows where you're at on social media because you're so active. But I mean, you can go ahead and plug that in there still. Yeah, well, yeah, just the same thing, Beatrice Bupley. Um, I feel a little out of place here with all the Friday the 13th. Although I the reason I'm late is on my own podcast, um, DK and the Bees Horror Buzz. Um, we had uh, uh, Peter Anthony, who who was the director of Roseblood. Um, he was on, and and uh, it just it seems like Friday the Thirteenth has been coming into my life more and more. You know, so after th three decades of Elm Street, <laughs> um, it's it's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting getting getting into uh, Friday the Thirteenth, and and uh, just as a little tidbit both my sons um because we live in new york and we're on the on the border of new jersey they all went to camp noby bosco which mm -hmm. the, most of you must know that that's where crystal lake takes place so um it's it was i guess destiny anyway so uh i'm looking forward to jumping not jumping ship i can't, i'll never jump ship but just <laughs> you know they're already <laughs> united right um when ever since jason and Freddie faced off from each other. The the two have been intertwined. So we're just so, and, and I you know I'm, I'll wrap this up. So how does it feel to have your son and basically his killer right here on the on the same chat? I mean, come on, there has to be beef here. Yeah, it it it's well, you know, it's <laughs> funny because I had um wait, you guys see? Can you see up in the corner above Amanda, the the bust of amanda you see i don't know if you guys can see that picture so it's a painting it's um amanda kruger with with freddie and you know he's like freddie but just as a child freddie and then of course is pamela Voorhees he's with young jason and they're at a playground you know kind of oh. facing off and it was actually after um the artist who made that had given it to me um that uh you know montavious you know uh, maurice had um contacted me and asked me to play Pamela Voorhees and I was like thrilled because I just thought that would be so funny um I don't know whether that <laughs> film's going to happen or not but um I just I think it's I, it's it's kind of cool if you can you know start to be like the iconic mom of truly the mother of all horror or the mother of evil and terror but um no I'm 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 kind of stoked I I'm I, you know there's always there's been this big connection between them anyway so Nice. Okay. And in closing, so Andy, Wait, I mean, Anthony. Is and there Dan one more thing that I could add really quick, please? I'm sorry? Is there one more thing that I could add really quick, please? Sure. Sure. Yes, ma'am. 
I just wanted to bring this up. One thing that I love about this movie is that it's really involved with the fans. I just wanted to say that because I've never seen another movie acting like this, where it's really getting involved with the, with the fans, having all the giveaways, giving back, involving everyone, giving them a chance to be a part of something that they love. And so I just wanted to make sure I put that out there and say to the viewers, you know, make sure that you check this out because this is a different type of opportunity. You could also, you could get involved by adopting a camper. You can name them. You can, um, you know, get involved in the movie. There's just, there's just so much involved and it's, it's just something really new and innovative. So I hope that you check it out. Nice. Nice. And Mandy and Anthony. So like, what is one thing that, you know, you guys are most excited for and where can we, you know, keep tabs on you guys and see what's up. I'm excited to put, um, cause I've been putting a lot of my artistic um, aspect into everything more into this project than I have with any other projects. So um, being able to put more of my work into something was, it's a really great opportunity. And plus it's like, I'm really excited to work with all the cast and everything that we have picked out. And I just, just to be able to get this film created and everything, it's just, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fantastic. So that's, I'm just looking, really looking forward to working with everyone. It's, it's gonna be a beautiful like opportunity and everything, especially with the cast that we have lined up. And what about you? <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Amanda, for mentioning how inclusive we are, because that is something that we pride ourselves on, just being yeah. inclusive, including the fans and everything, um, trying to give back as much as possible. We just recently did a live giveaway on Facebook where we gave away hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth yeah. of uh, merchandise um, mm -hmm. to, to the supporters of the campaign, the people that donated, and to the people that weren't able to donate, but at least tuned in to help share the campaign and mm -hmm. give it a thumbs up here and there, we gave back to them too. Um, you know, we have opportunities for people to join the cast to, to get a producer credit and get their foot in the door. You know, that wasn't possible when I was younger. You couldn't just go online and uh, join a campaign and, you know, have an IMDb page. It just wasn't a thing. Um, you can do that now. You can absolutely do that. Somebody just sent me a message um just now and said hey um you know there's a perk where you, you can get your book in the movie so i want to do that and i'm gonna have my book in your movie so there's you know an opportunity for him so now he's a part of the campaign um we'll be able to promote his book in the film and say hey it's this character's favorite book and it's by this author that 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 sort of thing was like an unthinkable unheard of mm -hmm. when i was younger and so that you know that was the kind of thing i would have dreamed of it at the time and I'm glad that we're able to do that for people now. Um, I, I am, of course, looking forward to working with all the amazing actors and just making these, um, making the kills in, in the film is a big thing uh, to be able to, to make them look realistic because it's one thing to go and it's, you know, film kill scenes, but it's it, there's an art form to it to, to make it look the way I think it should look in a film. And that's uh, something I look forward to doing. I look forward to, to working with these guys with some of the dialogue, um, their, you know, their monologues and things that I think they're going to have fun with, you know, stuff for Sean and uh, Zachary C. Miller, who isn't with us tonight, but um, we'll have him on next time. We'll, we'll bribe him. He's one of the ones that we have to we have to convince to come on. Um, but there, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different stuff that I'm looking forward to um, bringing Amber Brooks character to life and being able to, uh, uh, you know, people when you have a character like Jason, Jason Voorhees, Pamela Voorhees, people already have an idea of what that character should be like. So being able to give them exactly what they love about those characters and to be able to put our own little twist on it is something that I think is kind of uh exciting to look forward to because you know i i want to make the fans happy i know that they think of jason Voorhees being a certain way and i know that they they love that character and the same thing with pamela and to be able to, to do uh to do that those roles justice and to put our own uh add our own little little flavoring to it and then uh to bring all these original characters to life is is just super awesome so. perfect and that well said. And and where can uh, fans go and connect with uh, Mandy and uh, Anthony? Where can we go check on you guys? You have social media. <laughs> if you go on Instagram, um, my Instagram handle is death 
um, D-E-A-T-H, the number two, Mandy, M-A-N-D-E-E. -E. Um, you can, that's mostly where I do a lot of my, um, like my social media work and everything like that. Um, I like that platform the most, but I'm under Mandy Cantone on Facebook and on Instagram for blood loss. Um, you can find it under Friday the 13th blood loss, just all one thing. Yeah, and you can find me on Facebook. Just use my name, Anthony Kaimano. I'm pretty social. You know, I, I will respond to you 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. Um, I I do my best to, to get back to everybody. It means a lot to me to, uh, uh, to, to reach out to those people that take the time to reach out to me. Um, so feel free to send me a message. I'll get back to you. I'll answer all, all questions. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also find us on Indiegogo. I don't know if I've mentioned that. Um, <laughs> we go, it's, Friday, Blood Loss. it's actually, it's, it's in demand. All right. And we have, oh yeah, it's in demand. And we have uh, a ton of perks that you guys can get too. If you donate and if you can't donate, share the campaign. It goes a long way. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, we have, we have an amazing cast too. I don't know if I mentioned that either. We have an amazing cast. It's in demand. Um, yeah, no, all the support means a lot. I'm great that we, uh, I'm grateful that we have this, the support that we have. And uh, it was a lot of fun being able to hang out tonight with the cast. Uh, seeing all these people together tonight was awesome. Uh, we haven't been able to do this yet. We, we have had some of them on with us, but not this combination. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, I like the Brady Bunch effect. Yeah, we've got the Brady Bunch thing going. Uh, yeah, we'd love to come back sometime too, maybe after we film so that we can promote and talk about the experience that we had and compare. And so we could say like, you know, how did you overcome these things after after we go through the uh, the motions? But yeah, we uh, I think we had a great time tonight and um, we're looking forward to making the film together and we're looking forward to uh, doing making something great for the fans. Hell yeah, sounds good. Well, uh, Ghost and Ghouls out there, you know, definitely get involved into the film. But the 13th Blood Loss coming near you. Can't wait for this, man. Uh, everybody, congratulations, you know, on your parts. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, so just in close, guys, I'd like to say thank you for joining us here on The Empty Crypt and looking forward for and Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All thank right. You. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.